uh, find this here, but notice this phrase, and having conceived a great and unutterable scheme, he communicated it to his son alone. Now that's before the section he quotes. Then that sound like God's sovereign decree? Then that, that sound like intertrinitarian consideration of what we would call the uh, eternal covenant of redemption? He had conceived a great and unutterable scheme. He communicated to his son alone. And then a little bit below after that. But when he revealed it through his beloved son and manifested the purpose which he had prepared from the beginning. Which he had prepared from the beginning. It sounds like Paul to me. It sounds like Ephesians 1. This found, sounds like sovereignty, not based upon, wonder what's going to happen to, oh, look at what happens. Oh. No. The purpose which he had prepared from the beginning. Hmm. I, I can understand why this could represent Dupied. But now let's get into section 9. Um, having thus planned everything already in his mind with his son. Yeah. Sounds like the sovereign decree of God. Doesn't it? Having thus planned everything with his son already in his mind. Hmm. Um, Aren't you provisionists into pawn, pass upon? Uh, isn't that everything? I mean, you really do emphasize the the use of of pawn in that way, or pawn ta depends on, depending on you know how, how it's being used. That's what's used here. It's the very first word. He planned everything already in his mind, not by looking down the corridors of time and seeing what man was going to do. He planned everything already in his mind with his son. Hmm. That's interesting. Um, then, let's see. I made a bit of a... Then a little bit later on. We might now be made deserving by, by, by the goodness of God. I thought Leighton doesn't believe in prevenient grace. I've, I've heard him go through, he has that entire list of people in the Old Testament, because they were good, then God did this or the other thing. Huh. We might now be made deserving by the goodness of God. Not that we deserve the goodness of God. Or that by our doing, we become deserving of the goodness of God. And having made clear our inability. <laughs> and having made clear our inability to enter into the kingdom of God of ourselves might be enabled by the ability of God. <laughs> so, we have adunatan, inability. Who uses that phrase, inability? Well, it's not the provisionists, and it's not the Arminians. It's, it's not the open theists, or even the Pelagians or the semi-Pelagians. Inability. That's a term you hear from them there monergists. <laughs> them monergists. Yeah. Huh. And then you need to have the dunatoy of God. His ability. Huh. That's interesting. Here you've got somebody talking about man's inability and God's ability in the context of salvation to enter into life. <laughs> I wonder why that got skipped by Dr. Wilson in his dissertation. Hmm. Maybe could it be could because just down below that you have, but when the time 
Here. Alpha de ha kairos han theos pra etheta. When the time or the season came which God had ordained. Who uses that language? People who believe in the sovereignty of God and his control over human events. Huh. So then you have the son as a ransom, just for the unjust. Only by his righteousness could our sins be covered. The sweet exchange, justification by faith in Christ alone. I mean, this, if, uh, if you weren't just amening almost every sentence in this section, I don't know what you were doing. Uh, I mean, listen to this. Oh, the unexpected evidence that the iniquity of many should be concealed in one righteous man. And the righteousness of one should justify many that are iniquitous. Do you think this guy has seen Romans chapter 5 before? Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly where it's coming from. Romans chapter 5. Then we have, having then in the former time demonstrated the inability of our nature to obtain life. Uh, inability again. Yeah, yeah, there's, there it is. There's that inability of our, of our fuseos, our nature. By nature, we are unable. Adunatan. This guy has a reformed anthropology, not a provisionist, not a traditionalist anthropology. Why just give the reference and then skip to other stuff in Diognetus. Just wondering. It does make you wonder. Could it be? Because Dr. Wilson has no response to what Diognetus actually said. And that the facile references that were given, if they were to be placed right there in light of what we're reading here, would be seen for the facile excuses that they were? It's possible. For all you provisionists that were going, we need to have a debate, need to have a debate right now. Do you think you'd want to debate this? Think you'd want to debate what uh, Diognetus's, what Mathetes' view was in writing to Diognetus on these subjects? Based on the original language? Yeah, okay. So, uh, by nature... I, I, I think we need to, in fact, I'm going to do something here in my, in uh, accordance real quick. Okay. So, and again, this is on, I, I included this information and the quotations in the article, aomin.org. Look it up on the blog. It's the last thing on the blog. Well, once this airs, it won't be the last thing on the blog. But, but having then in the former time demonstrated the inability of our natures to obtain life. By nature, we do not have this ability. And now, having revealed, it's the normal term used in the New Testament of, of showing something. In fact, it's, I'm pretty sure, I'm just it's off the top of my head. Oh, yeah. James chapter 2. Show me. Show me your faith by your works. Dykeson. Yeah, this is Dykeson right here. So, and now, having Shown the Savior, Dunatan Sodzain, able to save. The Savior who is able to save. Man, that's Hebrews 7.25. That's the same terminology. He is able to save to the uttermost. Hebrews 7.25. To save who? Even, and this is what, and I, I, Provide this on the, on the website. Here it is. Dunatan sodzain kai ta adunata. So, the Savior, he has shown the Savior who is able to save 
even the unable ones, literally, the ones lacking ability. There's one other thing you've just got to see here, and this is this is really amazing. Uh, again, makes me go, hmm, wonder why this didn't get cited. Next sentence, next sentence. Uh, and having now revealed a savior, able to save even those creatures that have no ability, he willed, actually it's a continuation sentence, he willed that for both reasons, we should believe in his goodness and should regard him as nurse, father, teacher, counselor. When you look at the Greek, it's, li it's literally ebulethe uh, pistuon hemas. Pistuon hemas. He willed us to believe. <laughs> he willed us to believe. The same term, bulamai, that is used in Ephesians 1, it's used in Acts chapter 4, where God predestines according to his will. It's used in Ephesians 1, like I said. This is the term, and we've already seen him clearly pulling from Paul. So here you have this second century writer speaking of God's divine will, willing us to pistuine to believe the very thing the provisionists say God doesn't 